Hello future winners and welcome to our new endgame video. This one is played by Ivanchuk against Anton. Let's start. Black is having pawn on c6 and white on e3. What's the plan? How are we playing those structures? White has two plans that are pretty good and uh, black is obviously trying to protect himself because he's having weaknesses on c6 and one very important thing is that this g4 pawn is actually a good pawn because white is playing on queen side i will tell you the plan right now and black should play on king side but this g4 pawn is blocking him so this pawn is a double pawn but it's actually very important and very good for white that's why black is playing passively and white is the one who is trying to win so there are two plans one is to play b4 and b5 then make black to play c5 and after taking, we can get isolated pawn on d5 or if he takes with pawn, then those two pawns that we can attack. And second plan for white is to come with king to d3 and then to play e4. Why is important to play e4 when he is going to have this isolated pawn? It's because he is going to have three ranks for his rooks uh, and black only has two so white is getting space and he can go from one side to another and that's how he is going to dominate the game knight f4 of course his idea is to play knight d3 then knight b4 to attack pawn on c6 to provoke to c5 or to play knight b6 and when this rook is moved, then white can play b4 and b5, and black is going to play c5. First black is waiting, so king f8, knight d3, king e7, knight b4, white is sticking to the plan, king b6, knight a6, rook b7 and b4 it's a final time to make his plan b5 knight c5 rook b6 knight d3 black played b5 which is of course making weaknesses but that's one and to win the game we need to have two so that's why white is manipulating with his knight and trying to make weakness on king's side. And that's what he did. He was threatening to play knight e5, so black needed to play f6. He got second weakness. It's this pawn on g7 that white used in the future. Rook c3, king d7. He wanted to play knight d6 and knight c4 to block this line, but it was better to play actively to attack this pawn on a2 and to play rook a6. This is also stopping white from playing a4, because black will uh, stop this c line, but after rook a1 and a4, white will open a line, so it is actually not helping to stop this c line. Knight c5, king a7 rook a1 so he is preparing to play a4 rook a8 knight b3 knight d6 and a4 he will exploit this a7 pawn but one very important thing we should keep pressure if a black takes on a4 that's perfect for us but we are not going to take on b5 until we are made such a great pressure that it is winning. Let me show you what I mean. 
So knight c4, and now not taking on b5, but first rook c2, king f7, rook c8. And here we have some real threats, because if we take now, we can take on a7 too. So that's what I was talking about. King g6, he moved his king, because he wanted after taking on a7 to be able to take on b4, because it's not a check. And that's what happened in g. So pawn takes, rook takes, rook a7, rook takes, rook takes, and rook b4. But here, two weaknesses that black has made white win the game. Knight c5, knight d6, and this is also showing why f6 and this knight d3 move was such a great idea for white. Rook d6, knight e6, knight e8, rook e7, rook b8. And black doesn't have a move anymore. So here's time when white can improve his position and black can do active. So f4. f4 is logical move and many players would play it. But better move was knight f8 because there's one mate. King h3, we are threatening to play f4. So the only move is f5. We take rook e6, a5 because the g4 was threatening, f3 anyway, and g4 because after taking, taking, king g5, knight h7, check. But white played f4. f5 is the only move because of f5 for white. g5. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. And black doesn't have anything to move. That's why he decided to play knight d6. And to give this pawn. Because after rook c8 for example we can simply go with our king to play king uh, h2 and black uh, must play with rook again then king g3 then king h4 and knight f8 checkmate so he can't simply wait he must do something so he gave up a pawn rook g7 king h5 rook h7 king g4 g6. Of course, white is completely winning, he's going to promote his pawn, he is a pawn up, but he is uh, playing properly till the end. f4, g7, knight f5, pawn takes, rook e8. It's just a matter of time when white is going to win the game. King f2, rook a8, rook h3, idea is to stop uh, black from playing knight g3, rook a2, rook a8, and it's hopeless for black. This is the way white won, rook e8, rook c3, he is going to win this pawn too because black can't protect it. Rook g8, rook a3, but first playing. He has time, he can do whatever he wants, he's making his opponent tired and regretting that he didn't resign. Rook e8, rook a6, of course black can't take knight because of promotion. Knight g7. Yes, he actually played knight g7 and he still didn't resign. But for example, knight e7, then knight f8. So 
so he took rook e7, rook a3. But I can't take on g7 because of uh, rook g3. They played some more moves, but I think that it is not interesting, so white simply won the game. And that's it for today's Friday lesson. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you next week.